the Lord is our father and as the father he will not let us do naughty things without a disciplinary action you bring me one human being that lived anywhere near Jesus Christ of Nazareth lived impossible you bring me whoever you want to bring come on let's go I am ready show me a life of a religious figure of a philosophical figure over a political for anyone you bring me anyone no one ever lived like Jesus the holiness the purity the perfection the excellence the glory of Jesus Christ no one and we've said this before and I'll say it again if anybody wants to compare the Lord Jesus with any other religious figure or whichever that figure is let's say I'll go with you and let's compare but I will tell you this my dear friend if you say your religious figure came with morals with ethics with values with principles okay no problem the ultimate your religious figure could have achieved in their life on earth was to change a bad person into a good person with those teachings with those morals with those values the ultimate they could have achieved was to change a bad person into a good person Jesus Christ of Nazareth all glory to his holy name he did not come to change a bad person into a good one he came to change a dead person into a living one in this there is no comparison everyone falls short Jesus stands alone so unique so highly exalted and elevated beyond every religious figure and every human being he is the only one that said if you believe in my word even if you die you will live but if you take my body and drink my blood you will live in me forever Jesus promised life and eternal one too no one ever dared to promise humanity eternal life except Jesus Christ of Nazareth so in this alone should raise a humongous question mark to you my dear friend you need to find out more about Jesus Christ why is he so unique why is he so special why 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 12 eyewitnesses and 70 others who witnessed the Lord lived with him walked with him saw everything heard everything documented everything then they are not obligated to falsify things in fact they died for what they wrote and they died for what they believed in and never blinked their eyes twice even when the sword was placed on their necks they never denied Jesus Christ of Nazareth isn't this also another question mark why would they do that are they so ignorant to die for someone who is a false prophet or a, or a holy man unless they died for the one who said I am that I am the true living God revealed in the flesh came to visit earth heaven embraced earth when Jesus was born so my beloved in the tabernacle at the time of Moses the prophet the Lord God said I want two people to work in my tabernacle one from the tribe of Judah symbolically representing Christ the king and one from the tribe of Dan symbolically representing Satan the Antichrist now why the Lord through his infinite wisdom allowed Satan to work through us as well reason being since we are so weak we are created on the basis of love and you've heard this before and I'll say it again wherever there is true love there has to be freedom because without freedom you can never live this love you can never taste this love and you can never share this love what allows you to live this love 
to taste it, to share it is freedom. So therefore, wherever there is true love, there has to be freedom. Freedom is indispensable. You cannot separate it from love. And since there is freedom, there has to be choices. Otherwise, how can you say you are free if you don't have more than one option? Imagine if God placed you in this path and there is no other path but this one. And then God came and said, you're free. I'm not. You placed me in a, in a path. I didn't choose. You chose for me. Where is my freedom? And this is why God said to Adam, I'll give you options. There are trees over there you can eat from. There is the tree of life in the heart of the center and the heart of the Garden of Eden you can eat from. But the tree of the knowledge of good and evil, don't eat from it. He gave him options. Why? Because Adam was created on the basis of divine love. With love came freedom, with freedom choices. And with choices, it required something called the will. The will is the tool for me and you to say yes and to say no, including God. I can say no to God and he will not interfere. But he will indirectly. But directly he won't until I allow him freely, willingly, based on love, come God and do as you please. He won't until we call him. For this reason, God allowed Satan to work through us. You know why? Because you see, God is good and God is love. God doesn't hurt. God doesn't kill. So he uses Satan to break us. He uses Satan to break us when we become, in a simple terminology, naughty. He didn't laugh. When we veer off the road, God will allow Satan to come and smack us. So there are two working in this tabernacle, temple. The temple is the body, your body here. So he will allow Satan to work in us. Every time we say no to the Lord Jesus, he will call Satan and say, smack them. But I'll give you a limit, a boundary. Not freely. I have limited you. Because I know each of my children, what they are capable of handling. He will not give us something outside of our capacity. But even when we go through hardships, it is the grace of the Lord Jesus that is carrying us as well but satan will work in us christ will work and satan will work every time we do something good remember it was the lord the good god who did it in us and every time we do something bad remember it was satan who is working through us because through satan it is a disciplinary action for us to wake up It's a more simplistic approach. When I'm healthy, when I'm wealthy, when I'm strong, when I'm young, no one can say anything to me. And especially living in the West, it's a free country, brother. What's up, bro? Get down, brother. Lay me some skin. Whoa, what's up? What, 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 what? So when I am healthy, wealthy, still young, and it's a free country, I can go wherever, however, with whomever. No one can stop me. Mom and dad come and say, son, please don't go with these so-called friends. Be quiet, mom and dad. And if you talk more, I'll dial triple zero. They'll throw you in the cage and take you to Fairfield Police Station. <laughs> Hello to all the <laughs> coppers. <laughs> and please don't book me when I'm speeding on the road, okay? That's a confession. <laughs> All right, we try to be good, but if you book me, I'll book you. <laughs> I'll book you my way. I'll make a phone call. I'll make the phone call to the one who created you or created me, so you better not book me. All right, so parents say, don't do it. No, I'll do whatever I want. The, the priest, the father says, don't go, don't mix. No, we don't listen. We don't listen to, to no one. What happens? The Lord allows Satan to come and get me into trouble. Uh, I was caught 
taking drugs. The cop has caught me. I was speeding and I was drunk and I had an accident. And my friend got really hurt in that accident. He almost lost his life. What a big shake. What a big quake happened in my life. Who allowed it? The Lord. Why? Because I'm disobedient. I'm not listening. And if he lets me freely as I wish, I will end up destroying my entire being. God is love. He purchased us with his own precious blood on Calvary on the cross. He will not let you go until he calls you home. So he will let Satan to come. When I'm healthy, I don't care about anything. When I'm sick, <laughs> why can't we be good boys and good girls without going through hardships? The Lord is our Father. And as the Father, He will not let us do naughty things without a disciplinary action. And that disciplinary action, Satan is working also. Satan will come and break us. Christ, who is also working in us, will make us. Christ, light. Satan, darkness. Christ, holiness. Satan, filthiness. Christ, life. Satan, death. Christ, construction. Satan, destruction. But let me tell you this. Between the destruction and the construction, this is where you will meet your Messiah face to face. Wow. Between the destruction and the construction, this is where you get to know the Messiah. He reveals himself to you between being broken and being amended once again. When we hit rock bottom, it is then and then only we realize there is no one that can save me except God. You see, the Lord will make sure I come to this realization. The Lord will make sure I come to this truth. The Lord will make sure I come to this insight where He will make sure I no longer rely, trust on, in, in people, but my reliance and trust must be first on God, then people that are given to me by God. But you see, before I relied on people, I didn't care about God. So what will God do? He will take them away one by one. You put, take this as an advice, okay? And don't try it, it's dangerous. You put anyone before the Lord, he will take that person from you. And he will make sure that the people that you thought they were the one and only for you, you will realize there is only one who is the one and only, and that is Christ the King. No one, no one can love you, can help you, no one can support you more than Jesus. No one. 